the interest of time, we have Marcos Massini with us. Marcos, would you please share your slides with us? Marcos is going to be talking about uh, um, the correction of kyphosis with neurological deficits. So if you can have Marcos slides. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you all for the invitation. Uh, yeah, I hope you are seeing my... Not yet, we're just waiting. Slide? Yeah, okay. Coming up. Okay, we got them. Well, uh, talking about uh, kyphosis with neurological deficit, probably uh, will take us uh, to another kind of kyphosis that frequently associated with neurological deficit. My initial training was in uh, Nottingham Hospital with Professor John Worth and Mac and Webb, which, uh, which you work so much in uh, pediatric cases. I have going on through these uh, uh, papers since 1988, which associate deformity and neurological deficit. And as you all know, there are many uh, reasons for you having a kyphotic uh, curve and many of them come to neurosurgeons or orthopedic surgeons for treatment. And some of them are associated uh, with malformation. Uh, congenital malformation will play a role in this uh, association with neurological deficit. Just to remember, we have many kind of uh, deformity uh, in the spine as duplication, fusion, poor alignment, a lack of formation, disproportion, and this all can contribute to deficit, to neurological deficit. As you, you can see it here, uh, you can have a curve, and as the, the patient has a curve, there is a compression anteriorly of the spinal sac, if you have only stabilized by the no, no, uh, not formation, correct formation of the body, there is no uh, uh, compression anteriorly. So if we go to this organogram, patients with spinal deformity may uh, be submitted, so, uh, examined by MRI and myelogram, and of course, all the, the other uh, X-ray, to complete if there is minor depth and we can think about curve correction we can try traction and or anterior uh, spinal fusion and uh, if it is progressive we have to do it in an emergency uh, way if the patient has paraplegia or paraplegis uh, we can do extension radiograph. If it's flexible, you can try traction. If there is no change, you can do anterior discompression if it's a rigid uh, curve. So this is a very curious thing. If you flex the patient and he has some movement here, you can uh, in, in, uh, worse the neurological deficit. Other way if you make some traction and the patient has a, a stabilized uh, deformity you can in, increase the compression of the spinal cord and then in, uh, worsen the neurological deficit so what we hope is that there is some movement here in the in the curve so that you can uh, you can uh, correct in part uh, the curve so there are uh, some treatments, combined options, as you saw in the last uh, talk. So you can do posterior fusion, instrumentation, you can do posterior fusion, combine it with anterior uh, fusion with or without any decompression. So if the patient has minor deficit, you can consider just 
making the traction and uh, stabilizing the curve like that. Uh, you can do combine it. Uh, you can do a summary section of vertebra and an instrument anteriorly and posteriorly. So there are some uh, decisions to be made. Uh, what is the best age to treat the, the, the children? As, as this is most frequent in, in child. Uh, should I uh, do it posteriorly only? You have to consider the growing factor and really can uh, correct the curve. Should I use rods, screws, or should I do both? Or uh, should I start uh, uh, the convex growth, a rest, or excise vertebra, and uh, for which distance? So there are many questions. So the most common procedure I have been doing in kyphosis or kyphoscoliosis severe with neurological deficit is this uh, kind of the compression. When you take out of this angle, it's a sharp angle kyphotic. So like you can see here and you can see there is a migration posteriorly of the dural sac with the compression. You can complete uh, the stabilization anteriorly with bone or with uh, fibula, uh, graft, just to stabilize or uh, just distract. As we, we, you can see here, you distract the curve and accept some uh, kind of the degree. When I asked myself, uh, what degree of curve should we treat to prevent the neurological deficit. Uh, I did this uh, laboratory experimentation. So you can see, we start having a compression of the vinous uh, circulation of the spinal cord when there is a sharp angle of 50 degrees. And we have uh, most of the neurological deficits uh, with uh, probably arterial compression, uh, with 19 degrees. So to prevent uh, a sharp angle scoliosis to, to cause a neurological deficit, you should uh, operate the patient uh, in 40 or 50 degrees. But the, most of the papers published, they uh, come to the patient when the patient has some walking problem. So usually, the papers uh, refer the angle much more uh, severe. So I, I went through this uh, review of 44, 43 cases uh, from centers that are well known here in Brazil and the United States. As you can see, a uh, majority of these patients with neurological deficit were under 20 years. Most of the cases were uh, congenital, but there are many other uh, known uh, cause for this. They were uh, submitted to evaluation, and eight cases had minor, minor neurological deficit. 27 had paraparesis severe in paraplegia with no movement uh, below the, the, the compression, eight cases. As you can see, most of the patients had T4 to T6 uh, uh, angulation or in uh, T10 to T12, T11, most of the, the case in this uh, mobile area. So uh, in these papers, they used to do non-operative traction, plaster, but uh, most of the patients uh, went for surgery uh, uh, posterior fusion without laminectomy, as you saw in the model, there is no compression posteriorly uh, in the angle of the kyphotic. So laminectomy is almost uh, uh, necessary for this treatment. So most of the case had a spinal cord compression by a posterior lateral or anterior transthoracic uh, uh, the compression. So in this case, a kyphosis angle was around 42. Uh, in 42 cases, around 65. As you can see, 
patients with uh, neurological deficit, and the scoliosis was around uh, 60 degrees. They had a complication, complication not respiratory, one patient uh, death. Uh, and you can see here uh, the duration of the symptoms. So this is uh, something that uh, uh, starts very slowly. So as we, when we treat uh, uh, benign tumors of the spine, they have a high potential of recovery because the compression is not accurate and it's a progressive and uh, the, the, the spinal cord can adjust the circulation during the compression uh, pressure. So six months, here you can have some people with 12 months and seven patients had much more uh, than 12 months. And you can see that very few uh, follow deterioration. Most of the patients improve it uh, and mainly those who were in less time compression with less uh, period of uh, deficit. So only six had non-operative. One of them was a quadriplegic patient that, uh, evolu with evolution to death and two patients had uh, anterior decompression uh, after the, the, the clinical treatment. So 32 patients had uh, six, uh, 16 had anterior decompression fusion, and 16 had also associated posterior uh, stabilization and fusion. As you can see, there are uh, respiratory complication, one case of uh, vulvos, and uh, some patient, one patient with pseudoarthrosis. So uh, our experiences involve 10 patients. They, one, the first case I would like to show is a female with eight years old, which has uh, difficult to walk, uh, sign, Babinski's sign in the lower members, paraparesis. Uh, she was walking with crutch and uh, we consider Frank D. And as you can see the patient, there is a uh, slight uh, scoliosis, but a very uh, uh, angulated uh, kyphosis. We did anterior approach, transthoracic, with a team of, uh, which include the, the thoracic surgeon. And uh, during the surgery, we use this uh, winter spreader, which is uh, one way when you release all the discs, you can uh, uh, recover an, uh, some angulation of the kyphotic, and uh, probably uh, you can put some uh, graft to support and fuse in a new angulation, less uh, angulated than the patient had. Another female with 21 years old, walking impairment in the last four years, and uh, need help to walk. So uh, you can see it's a very severe, severe kyphoscoliosis, which is scare everybody who looks. You can see by the, the exams that there is compression of the lungs. So we did the anterior approach. We decompressed the spinal cord. And then here is just a hemostatic way cover and then we did the posterior stabilization. The last case is a male, 19 years old, also with walking impairment, the last six months. Uh, he was uh, submitted to a laminectomy elsewhere, and uh, then he became a Frank OC, wheelchair locomotion. So we decided to uh, do anterior uh, the, the sectomy, uh, lateral, transthoracic, and uh, we use some uh, uh, bone uh, graft to, to fuse the spine, and then we went posteriorly to correct, uh, and uh, uh, it was not easy. The patient had been operated before, 
So there, is, there were a scar. So in this series, half of them were male, and the mean age was 15 years, but patients ranged from nine to 21 years. The mean kyphotic uh, curve was 77, and the scoliosis is 42 degrees. Uh, the fulcrum of the kyphosis, most case was T7. Some patients had associated syringomyelia, cerebral palsy, epilepsy, and uh, the surgery performed in nine patients was uh, thoraco, uh, thoracotomy with vertebral decompression. In one case, the curve was very high, so we decided to do costal transversectomy. And all of them were submitted to posterior fusion. We had complication, and as you can see, uh, 15 days after surgery, the patients had improved in Franco, uh, Franco scale uh, classification. And uh, as you can see, uh, one patient kept in B, C, most of them come to E. And that seems that this kind of uh, deficit is a benign condition that, of course, considering the risks for procedure, is a benign, con uh, a benign condition that can be, can be reversed. So, in conclusion, uh, a broad spectrum of specialists treat degenerative spinal, and uh, we can use only both non-operative and operative approach. Treatment is characterized by substantial variability between and within specialities. Optimal care maximizes clinical benefit while limiting risk and costs. The approach encompasses a spectrum of risk, costs, and expected outcome. Each specialist uh, presents a perspective. So uh, I said that uh, we have many specialists in our team which include rehabilitation, physiotherapy, uh, psychology, all the patient is approached by all these specialists and before going to procedure. The best approach, of course, is not monolithic. You have to discuss with the, your team. Collaboration is something important. And of course, uh, I hope to uh, hear from you, your impression, and if this really can contribute to understand some of these patients with neurological deficit. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marcos Massini. Uh, it was really very interesting approach and nice talk. Uh, do you think um, uh, in case of sharp kyphosis, uh, we must uh, try to make first anterior decompressions always. I mean, we must avoid posterior osteotomy. What do you think about this? Yes, In sure. Hypotic cases. Sure. Shall we? Yes, I should. Yeah. Uh, osteotomies. Yes, I think that uh, the compression is anterior. Of course, there are some cases you cannot do traction just to see if there is some mobilization because uh, the patient can worsen the, the, the neurological deficit. And uh, the, the compression should be anteriorly. I didn't consider in uh, degenerative scoliosis the uh, narrow canal and the compression of the roots in this uh, presentation. But I hope uh, someone will complete this, uh, how to treat uh, the root compressions and how to treat the, the shallow canal. Thank you. I want to ask our uh, other speakers, uh, what is your opinion about the uh, patients with sharp kyphosis and with neurologic deficits? Uh, how do you start the surgery then? Uh, Claudio Lamartina? <laughs> Usually, we approach uh, uh, from uh, posterior the, the patient 
as uh, suggested by uh, Rocamil. It's a very old technique. You can uh, uh, perform a, a, a complete uh, uh, vertebral uh, uh, osteotomy, or you can remove the, 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 the part of the spine in which you have the, the worst uh, deformity. Uh, from a posterior, you can manipulate the, 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 the cord. Uh, uh, you can uh, short the spine and you can perform a, a solid uh, posterior instrumentation. In the same time, uh, an anteriorly, you can put a, a cage and a, a, that can complete your, 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 your surgery. Uh, usually, we approach f uh, uh, this patient from posterior only. Yeah. Um. Okay, uh, Max Ivy, what do you think about that? Well, I, I agree with uh, Claudio completely. We, we probably 10, 12 years ago, we, we changed this concept and we do today all these cases primarily from the back because you can, um, you can do all what uh, Claudio said and you can in fact, with this um, retractor systems, you can retract in a way that you can go at the same time from the lateral side with a posterior approach. So it's very rare that in this kind of cases we, we have to go really in front. We do most of them just by posterior approach. Okay. There are some questions from the uh, participants. Uh, Dr. Marcus, any experience of anterior decompression in first stage and then traction and then in third stage posterior stabilization application? Do you ever apply uh, traction in between? Um, Max? You, you as I said just before, we, in my first years in, as a spine surgeon, you know, we, we in fact, we did that. We did anterior release and um, in fact, very much what has been shown, I think it was a little bit the school of John Webb and I learned it from uh, John Webb too. And, and then with some experience, I more and more switched to posterior approach and, and uh, basically abandoned all these things like traction in between and two stage or three stage. You can do, in fact, most of this surgery today quite, um, quite precisely by a uh, posterior approach, as just Claudio described it. It's the way we do it. Okay. Marcos, do you have any, any other comments about the questions? Yes, uh, as I showed, uh, if you have a fixed curve, if you make traction, you can compress the cord or increase the compression. So uh, we must be aware about this. Uh, we can study the spine and see if there is any movement, you can keep traction, of course. But you have to know that if you, there is no movement, you will just uh, increase the compression and worsen the patient. Thank you. Yeah. I uh, Thank you, really. It was really very hard job to, to do such surgeries. Uh, without any compromise to neurology. Thank you a lot. And uh, now I switch 